Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Aloha and welcome to a special edition of Hikino, coming to you from Aya High School, home of Na'ali'i on the island of Oahu. This episode is the third in a series of six shows. Each installment will feature a specific Hawaiian value and will feature stories about people who live their lives based on that value. The Hawaiian value for this episode is Ha'aha'a, which means humbleness and humility. One of the organizations here at Aya that practices value is our very own Hawaiian Club. Club advisor Kumukai Gervasio teaches students to appreciate each other and instills humility in all their actions in order to engender the aloha spirit. Through Ha'aha, ha the Hawaiian Club strives to perpetuate the Hawaiian culture, become ohana, and show respect for the land. Our first story of Ha'aha ha comes from the students at Chiefis Kamakahele Middle School on Kauai, who show that a catastrophic accident can sometimes lead to rebirth through humbleness and humility. Just starting like the first little lines, there's gonna be a wave right here with the mountains. Here at Chingyun Village Shopping Center in Hanalei, Kauai, Moses Hamilton is a well-known person. Going by the nickname Mo, you can usually find him chatting with shoppers or painting art for everyone to enjoy. Well, I paint here in Honolulu like three, four days a week. Uh, and then I also paint a lot at my home. I get a very good reaction to my art. I think it's a very fun and active style. It's very alive, full of color, and a lot of island feel. I've always been good at art, and, and yeah, but it didn't become the way he made his life until after he was injured. Life took a dramatic turn for Moses and his family when he got into a car accident on a late October night. I was driving home on a wet night after work and lost control of my vehicle. And then I woke up two or three days later and I had been paralyzed. And I was told by the doctors I probably wouldn't move much of my body below my chest anymore. Life was pretty dark. You know, I did at times wonder if I still wanted to be alive. It was a real life-changing thing for my whole family and for me. It taught me that all things are possible if we just really try. Maybe you won't walk. A lot of ways in Moe's art, he walks. He doesn't have a paralyzed mind. He isn't paralyzed. The son said, I gotta look at some photos. This car accident left him in a rehabilitation hospital for three months. During his stay there, he was introduced to mouth painting. We have the Pacific, which is in Honolulu, and there was an art program, Louis Vuitton art program. There was all sorts of people with disabilities painting. The teacher talked me into trying a painting. A year and a half after being home from the rehab hospital, I was starting to feel healthier and ready to move on with my new life, and uh, I started with some simple little paintings. Thank you, Nara, thank you. Moses had to overcome many obstacles to get where he is today. Being disabled is a very rough road and it takes a lot of philosophy and a lot of power of will to overcome your day-to-day -day experience of being stuck in a wheelchair, not being able to move your body and be dependent on others. Live life with perseverance, you gotta have patience for the things you want, and you gotta practice at the goals and the things you wanna achieve. And you also gotta pursue it all with passion. Since his accident, Moses had to be dependent on others for help. This taught him many life lessons, including gratitude and humbleness. My car wreck was a very humbling experience. I was kind of an egotistical and brash. I felt like I was unstoppable at times, being a very strong young man. The reality is of how frail and fragile only not only our bodies are, but how quick and fleeting life is. It can change in a second. Live with an attitude of gratitude, be gracious, and love the things you have in life. Don't get caught up on what you don't have. Within our society, everyone wants so many new things. They forget to just focus on the day-to-day -day happiness of being here. You never know what's gonna happen tomorrow. You could be in a car wreck and life could be gone. So smile in the moment, because tomorrow is not insured. 
Conquering life's struggles, Moses' art has revealed the miracle of life to him. As his motto states, art soothes the soul. This is Alaysia Navor from Chiefest Kamakahela Middle School for Hiki no. Our next story focuses on a common byproduct of Ha'aha. Here, students from Kawaihona Okanaawao Public Charter School in Nanakuli show that giving away something of value for free is a true sign of humbleness. Following the wake of the original ambassador of Aloha, Duke Kahana Moku, Uncle George Kalili Kane joins a select group of distinguished Hawaiians who have made global waves. Arriving at Poka'i Bay before the sun peers over the Wa'anae mountain range, Uncle George begins another inspirational day of spreading the Aloha spirit. Having lost over 30 pounds in three months, Uncle George credits stand-up paddling with not just the obvious health benefits, but perhaps more importantly, it opened his eyes to do the idea of sharing his passion for stand-up paddling by teaching others to do it for free. We met Uncle George a few years ago and we actually thought he was selling surfboards. Two and a half years into this endeavor, he now calls the Bay of Dreams, Uncle George has shared his boards with over 2,800 people from around the world. I started paddling because uh, I needed a way to lose weight. Basically, I was an overweight Hawaiian that had some issues with my health. And uh, because I grew up in the water, I wanted to get back to surfing waves. But at my size, at almost 300 pounds, I didn't think I could get on board that I could actually surf the regular way. Not only did Uncle George paddle away the pounds, but he also felt guided by a new current with a more purposeful direction. Well, after I lost the weight uh, and started be surfing with smaller boards, the enjoyment level went up, but also I was feeling blessed by just the opportunity to lose weight on the water. And I thought that was a gift that God gave me personally and extended my life. So therefore, I used that gift to uh, introduce stand-up paddling to other people by giving away stand-up lessons. The only thing he ever asked for in return? A sticker from the visitor's hometown. Yeah, what I've done is I've uh, put together uh, business cards with my mailing address. And what happens is I give them a card so that when they get home, wherever home is, they can actually send me back a sticker that I put on the front of my trailer. So on the front of my trailer, I got stickers from all over the world. And it's kind of cool to say that, you know, somebody from that area came to Pokai Bay, which is out in Waianae, and to that process, the organization called Bay of Dreams uh, was able to bless them with stand-up le lessons. Uncle George himself sums it up best when describing the adventure that his life has now become. Building dreams one stroke at a time. Yeah. This is Kiahe Munaihai from Kauai Hona Okona'o'o reporting for Hikino. We're back at Aya High School on Oahu for a special edition of Hikino, focusing on the Hawaiian value Ha'a Ha'a, which means humbleness and humility. Aya High School was founded in 1961 and served the Central School District of Oahu. It currently has an enrollment of 1,050 students and promotes the concept of AIR, which stands for Achievement, Integrity, and Relationships. We breathe the AIR at Aya High School. Our next story of Ha'a Ha'a comes from Roosevelt High School in the Makiki District of Oahu, where a young man uses his experience growing up in poverty-stricken countries to share a sense of humility with his classmates. In the world's wealthiest nation, just about everything we've ever wanted is within our reach. Computers, cell phones, name brand clothing, the things that are indispensable in the 21st century. What is it like to be thrown into an environment without any access to the technology and luxuries we are used to. For John Camacho, he was exposed at a very early age. Those experiences had a tremendous influence on him. So I grew up as a son of two missionaries who worked with a missionary organization called YWAM, Youth for the Mission. And one of the things that I was involved in was helping poor people around the world. So. I spent most of my childhood traveling around Asia, so in countries such as India, I spent most of my time in India, the Philippines, Taiwan, Thailand, Nepal, Singapore, and there's some other countries that I've been to also. 
He also witnessed brutal realities that many face in these countries. One thing that really broke my heart was that mothers would actually break their child's bones just so that they would grow up with horrible disfigurements and that way people would have more sympathy for them so that so they would give them more money so they could hopefully support a child for that. And it was just so heartbreaking because, you know, why would you do that to your own child? If they get one meal a day, they're so happy and they're so thankful for something so little. Coming to Hawaii, John noticed a better condition of living. One thing that really stood out to me was the fact that poverty isn't as bad. It's still there. It's not necessarily on every single corner. Here at Roosevelt, John shares his unique experience with his friends. As John shared a lot of the things that he'd seen and been through and how things are in other countries, it really made me think about how I live and how we value things in our society. That we do take a lot of things for granted, such as running water and the availability of food, that we really should appreciate these things more because there are a lot of people out there that don't have the things that we have. And John really opened that up in my eyes. So I realized that not many people get, got to see the world like I did. And so I want to use my story, my childhood experiences, to bridge the gap between the two worlds. To come from somewhere where there has been no hope, it is great to know that maybe your word will give someone else hope. That is the hope of John Camacho. This is Satoshi Sugiyama from Roosevelt High School for Hikino. Our next story from students at Lahaina Intermediate on Maui proves that a humbleness of spirit comes in handy when you dedicate your life to the safety of children in your community. For as long as many people can remember, Uncle Harold, the crossing guard for King Kamehameha III Elementary School in Lahaina, Maui, has kept his community safe. I came here in 1994, and I've been here ever since. But I, I, I really, I don't know, I, I really love it here. I mean, helping the, the children and uh, that's my motivation because the, the kids, are, I, mean, I see children happy and smiling and want to come to school and all that, you know, it, it, it really perks me up, motivates me to keep on doing it. I really like that. Uncle Harold originally turned down the principal of King Kamehameha Third Elementary when she offered him the job, but his granddaughters pressured him to take it. I was so glad that they told me to do that, but I was upset with them because they, they cut me off. They said, oh, Grandpa, you got to do this. You got to help out. And I never was so thankful for, for all those, uh, you know, for, that, for doing that because it really made me aware of what I needed to do, really, to give back to the school, to give back to the, you know, to the community and stuff like that. Now, Uncle Harold finds it hard to miss school. They just want to see me. They just want to give me a high five. They get ask me to hug them, you know. And that, that's why it was so hard. I cannot leave them. Just like even when we have family get-togethers and uh, on other islands and stuff like that, normally I don't go because I I don't want to miss school. And my my family gets angry. They say, "Oh, you know, you gotta come and join us too." And this and that. And that. But I'm not happy doing what I'm doing here. The special gift that Uncle Harold brings to his job has caught the attention of many tourists who pass by the school as they explore Lahaina Town. I've had so many compliments, really. I mean, I'm embarrassed. I'm really embarrassed to say, but they're, they're very kind to me and everything. They say, you, 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 we don't have this back where we come from. We don't see people doing this. You know, and I'm, they've taken a lot of pictures of me there return back to the mainland, they sent me things and to, to the school, you know, because they don't know my address or whatever, but their, their intention is to let everybody know, you wanna, if you want to see Hawaii, go to Maui, go to the island of Maui in Lahaina, and go to that school, you know, and I've been having that kind of compliment for a long time. I think I'm more blessed and more people with better jobs. And I don't mind staying here another 20 years if God permits me to. I'm 80 years old now, you know. But I, you know, I, I don't think I ever want to quit. You know, as, as long as I can move around and do something, I, I, I'd like to come back to the school. This is Daisy Miranda from Lahaina Intermediate School reporting for Hikino.
We're back at Aiea High School, overlooking historic Pearl Harbor on the island of Oahu. Our school's mission is to develop fine citizens in this diverse and ever-changing tomorrow. Our vision, learning today to enlighten tomorrow. Our next story about Haha -ha comes from Mililani Middle School in Central Oahu. It features a former University of Hawaii star quarterback who chose a much more humble occupation after college. Before Colt Brennan, before Timmy Chang, the University of Hawaii football fans had a quarterback to rally behind as he led the then Rainbow Warriors to two winning seasons, a bowl game, and national recognition by beating the powerhouse BYU, a game that is still talked about today. Instead of pursuing a path to the NFL, this football star chose a career in helping others. As you said, like total domination. Gabriel back to pass, rolls along, he wants a touchdown, Blanche, touchdown! Picture perfect play! Garrett right on the money! I'm and very while, appreciative of what the University of Hawaii did for me as a football player, and, and you know, also what my sons can look forward to in terms of, you know, having a dad who went out and played collegiate sports and attended college, I think that's more important that they can see that, you know, that vision and have something to strive for. Our role as school-based behavioral health is to work with uh, students here at the school with emotional and behavioral problems. I kind of felt I was a little destined to be in this career field because growing up, my, my mother took care of foster children. She would always say that, you know, you, you got to understand that we are very fortunate to be in the situation we're in and that some of these kids don't have what we have. For me, that was kind of an eye-opening experience um, in terms of I, I, would, you know, I would ask her, you know, why, you know, do you do what you do? That was kind of her job, taking in kids. And, and so I think that's where I kind of developed the compassion for kids who weren't as fortunate as we are and had, you know, difficulties, whether it be broken families, um, you know, death of a parent. I mean, any, any situation, I kind of knew that you know, these, these kids need help, and, you know, my mom used to take them in, so, I mean, the transition to being a counselor was much easier. And, you know, being non judgmental, uh, accepting kids for who they are, just people in general, I think that was what I learned growing up. Being in a sports, a sports figure, being a role model for some of these students, not so much the younger generation, but, I mean, because I'm a little older, but a lot of these kids are very attracted to sports, and, you know, they have a connection with sports, sports figures, and um, I feel I kind of fit that role for the students. We are fortunate to have Garrett Gabriel on staff here at our school. With every student he helps, he scores a touchdown for that student's future, as well as the future of our community. From Millinati Middle School, this is Haley Fujimori for Hiki no. The value of ha, ha or humbleness, teaches us that we are neither indestructible or immortal. This realization may have saved the life of a coach featured in the following story by students at Iolani School on Oahu. Three shots and three hits. That's how Dominic Ahuna imagined his life ending if he continued on the path he had taken, working as a bouncer in clubs where crime and violence were commonplace. I would kiss my mom goodbye every night, knowing that I could die that night and come back, come back in a body bag. After graduating from Iolani, Don Mahuna was playing collegiate football at the University of Puget Sound when his father died in 1995. He gave up his football scholarship after his sophomore year to work three jobs to help his family. Basically, he was my coach, so when I, stopped playing, when I lost him and I stopped playing football, I just kind of lost my identity, and that's how I ended up, um, you know, just kind of wandering. Eventually, he fell into the nightclub business, working as a bouncer in three of the largest clubs in Hawaii. Many of his associates are now in jail. Drug dealers would frequent our clubs. Um, they would pay me, they would literally shake my hand with two or three hundred dollar bills to, uh, to block a door while they would take people in the back and do transactions. You know, so I basically made three, three, three hundred dollars in two minutes. A potentially deadly confrontation with a drug dealer awoke him to the reality of his lifestyle. The drug dealer and his gang waited outside the club for him one night, hoping to follow him home. And I had hung out with criminals long enough that I knew what he was doing. He was trying to follow me home to see who I lived with because they wanted to hurt my family members. See, criminals are smart. They know that 
You know, it's not enough just to hurt you physically, but if they can hurt someone you love, that causes more of an impact. Knowing this, Ahuna drove across the island and lost his pursuers in Nanakuli. Arriving back at his home in Makiki at 6 a.m., Ahuna says he heard the voice of God telling him that he had to change. Basically, I was, I had parked my car and he had spoke to me and he said, you know, if you don't change what you're doing, you're going to be there within a year. And it's almost like a movie played out right in front of my face. I couldn't stop it and I could see it. And it was, I saw myself and I saw two or three guys um, and I had pulled a, I pulled a weapon out of my waistband. And at the same time I pulled the weapon out, these guys had their guns out and they had shot me three times. This vision of where his life was heading made Ahuna change his path. He returned to his faith, to football, and to his alma mater, accepting a position as the strength and conditioning coach at Iolani in 2003. Since then, Coach Dom has become a cornerstone on campus. Along with helping athletes physically, Coach Dom also founded the Iolani Fellowship of Christian Athletes, which gathers once a week for an inspirational service. And he's just an older brother who's showing me the ways he's been through so much more than, than I have. And um, I know that I'll definitely encounter things that he has encountered. Over 100 students attend these meetings, which often have guest athletes coming in to speak, such as former UH football player and world's strongest man competitor, Joe Onasai. Yeah, I mean, basically in a nutshell, whatever they dream for their life, if they stay open to God, he can write their story better than they ever imagined. And that's what he's done for me. I didn't imagine I'd ever be in this place where I am right now. This was never part of my goal or my dream. But once I opened my life to God and I let him take control, he's taking me places beyond what I ever envisioned for myself. And he can do the same thing for them. This is David Pang from Iolani School reporting for Hiki No. We're back at Aea High School on Oahu and our special look at the Hawaiian value Ha'a Ha'a, which means humbleness and humility. This next story from students at Waianae High School in West Oahu explores how a family deals with a very humbling experience. The onset of dementia in a loved one. You just think about like, oh, what if she tries to make breakfast and she leaves the stove on and the house burns down. Oh, she overdoses and she can't get to her phone and she's paralyzed on the ground. Send a check to A7147 St. John's Road. Hey, you remember our address? <laughs> it's a small victory for Edith Domingo. Where are you going? That's not to your room. In a battle that she's losing every day. At first it was funny, because all the BP would just laugh and tease, and but then it kind of gets on your nerves after a while. Why are you stealing my... Edith is always up to something. What do you usually do when we're not home? watch TV, and I eat, and I eat, and I read, and I read. And she laughs, <laughs> and she laughs. <laughs> but the one thing she can't do... What did you eat at the spaghetti factory? ...is remember. Edith is one of five million people in the United States with dementia, a disease which causes a gradual loss of brain function. So even remembering her favorite grandchild isn't always easy to swallow. Grammy took your pills? Reminding her doesn't always get an answer. But the Domingos can still see the effect dementia is having on her. I don't remember. It's a really difficult situation for families when they have loved ones that have dementia. And even the individual may not realize, you know, that um, they're not able to do as much as they used to do. I think she gets frustrated. And some of it, she gets scared. She frowns a lot nowadays. She just frowns. This fear and frustration has caused Edith to hurt those closest to her. She would just want to just fight and argue with Brina. Yeah, she's. I think she punched her a couple of times. It was that bad. But no matter how bad it's gotten, Brina has always been by her grandmother's side. Yeah, I'm your favorite, yeah, grandma. With open arms and more than one way to solve a problem. You're constantly repeating yourself and it gets so draining and so exhausting that you just want to write it on a post-it and stick it on her forehead, but you can't. Single scoop in the cake cone. The Domingos are known for their creative solutions. You want to change the beliefs that already. Which are helpful when trying to ensure that Edith is in good hands. I try to juggle time at home between schoolwork and helping grandma. I love her. She took care of me when I was growing up. So now the roles are reversed. It freaks me out sometimes. I would like to have someone home all the time to watch her, but 
can't have that, so we just hope, we hope and we pray. And they help her win as many of these small battles as they possibly can. She's my mommy. <laughs> She's my mom. Gotta take care of ya. She's family. Yeah. This is Tressa Hoppy from Waianae High School reporting for Hiki No. We hope you enjoyed this special edition of Hiki No on the Hawaiian value Ha'a Ha'a, humbleness and humility, as much as we've enjoyed presenting it to you. All the stories that we presented were conceived, written, shot, and edited by students just like us. Prove positive that when it comes to stories that matter, Hawaii students Hiki no can do. Be sure to tune in next week when Hiki no students explore the Hawaiian value known as Imi na Oao, which means enlightenment and wisdom. Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.